Hi, my name is Andrew Brady, and I got to go on this awesome Italy trip. right there in the gray shirt he brought us to Italy So after thinking about it, I decided to base my research question on artwork in Italy. My research question is, can the average person without superior knowledge of classical illusions interpret Renaissance art? How is someone who doesn't know the context of the art supposed to interpret it? Let me use this analogy to help you understand what I mean. I just showed you a video of this kid dancing. I didn't even give you the song that he's dancing to. So if I ask you to interpret his dance, definitely not going to expect you to say... The choreography reflects the challenge of living in a world where poverty is institutionalized. Therefore, what constitutes an interpretation? You would have to look at the little things. Let's say that you notice that his arms resemble a wide embrace can tie that together and say, oh, maybe he's talking about the fact that underprivileged children need care and that they need people to understand them. It's the same thing if you look at this statue by Bernini. You don't need to know that the woman is Persephone to see the despair in her face, to see the hands pressing right into her back, to see that the sculptor is just trying to depict the domineering lust of man. That's why I chose this question, because I think there's something in art that humans can relate to, that in the expression of human emotion, there's something that everyone can see. So like, what's my methodology? Basically, I ended up choosing three Renaissance masterpieces. I labeled each piece easy, medium, or hard based on how much it relies on historical or mythological illusions. The data will come from my three peer volunteers who are gonna let me question them about their interpretations. One more thing, after we hear all the responses for each piece, I'm gonna come in at the end and go over what the volunteers should have seen. Let's go, first piece. Michelangelo's Pieta. Any of the See Jesus and the Virgin Mother Mary. Yeah, I recognize uh, Jesus and Mary. Obviously, uh, she's holding her son after he was crucified. Obviously, Jesus and his mother at the time of his death. Would you describe Mary as more involved or detached? Why? 
I feel that the mother figure is more detached. The way she holds her child when he's dead, she feels more caught up by it. Morning itself. The look on her face is very blank, and you can't see an expression in her like. I'd say she's really involved because just the look on her face, her eyes are down, pointing directly at him. Mary is very involved with the death of her son. You can tell by the mourning spelt on her face. However, I think she does understand why he has to go. Michelangelo actually created the Pietà in his 20s over a span of two years. The project was commissioned by a French cardinal. The Pietà down there is shaped like a pyramid. The tip of the pyramid is Mary's head, and that's where the focus of the viewer is supposed to be centered. The volunteers definitely got that because they were focusing on her head a lot. The question was very open though, and the Pietà is a work of conflict. Mary's head shows her conflict, but it's not really a good tell of whether she's more involved or detached. For example, look at how Mary holds Jesus. Look at how Michelangelo, around the area where Mary's hand is, literally turns solid marble into something that looks so much like flesh. It actually shows weight the burden that Mary has to carry with the death of her son. It shows how involved she is. Meanwhile, look at Mary's left hand. Look at how it's upturned, almost like she's asking, why? Why, God, does my son have to die for the good of humanity? And this is what shows that she's detached from the physical scene. The volunteers did okay on the first one. Let's see how they do on the second one. Let's go. Number two. Aeneas's Flight from Troy by Federico Barocchi. strikes me the most because I can see the uniform and see like, it looks like it's, it's pretty fancy looking. The character that strikes me most in this uh, piece is the wife. Uh, you can see the clear look of despair on her face as she does not believe they have any chance of escaping the city. However, it struck me because the contrast with the scene is based on heroism and clearly Aeneas is the hero of this particular story. Aeneas's flight from Troy is actually really cool because Federico Barocchi, a religious painter who only painted religious scenes, actually explores a mythological scene right here of the character Aeneas, the guy with the helmet on. He's saving his family, his son, his father, and his wife from the uh, burning and uh, sacking of uh, Troy. I couldn't really expect the volunteers to get it, but there's something going on right here uh, called compositional disequilibrium. That is when you paint a scene that has a lot of movement with saturated, slow colors. And then it also plays into the whole contrast between the darkness of the scene and the lightness of the characters. One thing that I really, really liked is that the volunteers focused on the faces of the characters a lot, and the faces of the characters tell so much about what they're thinking especially when you extrapolate even a little bit more and you look at what's behind each character's face. Behind the wife, there's the burning and the sacking and the killing, and that's what she's thinking. She's scared. She's frightened. Behind Ascanius, the son, there's the sparks and then, and then the explosions, and that's why he's covering his ears, because he's overwhelmed by the scene. And then Aeneas, behind him, is just darkness and his father. And then right now, he is just focused on the matter at hand and getting his family out of Troy. 
As far as the volunteers go, Andrew was a little bit off, but I think Eric hit it right on the head with that contrast between heroism and despair. Volunteers did a good job. Let's see how they do on the next one. Last one, number three. Michelangelo's The Last Judgment. any of the illusions? Both in the middle I see Jesus and the Virgin Mother Mary. No, I don't really recognize anyone. I was not aware of any of the illusions before. Descending from Jesus' throne, how does the mood change? The picture, the scene was really hectic and chaotic from the top up. The bottom people being sent to hell on the left side of the painting was pretty sad and on the right side. I felt kind of happy, I guess, because of people being saved. More sorrowful and deadly. You see uh, attacks on people. People are way down there. You can see a guy. Uh, he's just quivering with fear, so it's like death and devastation all around at the bottom. Below Jesus, you can tell there's a feeling of fear and respect as seen by the cowering figures of the two people below him. The Last Judgment is a really fascinating piece because about 20 years after he finished painting the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, Michelangelo started painting one of the main walls of the Sistine Chapel. Using a much wider variety of colors on his palette than he did 20 years before, Michelangelo depicted this biblical scene called The Last Judgment, where Jesus comes to earth and manifests God's divine justice. On the bottom left hand side of the painting, Michelangelo depicts the resurrection, and you can see the bodies once pallor, now revitalizing, now regaining their color, and you can also see the angels lifting up the dead to the clouds to heaven. I was really impressed because Andrew showed that he definitely understood the resurrection part of the fresco. In contrast to the bottom left side, the bottom right side depicts the fall of the sinners to hell. You can see Charon, the person that's supposed to be hell's ferryman actually smacking the sinners out of the boat with his paddle, driving them further into hell. Dave definitely understood the sorrowful mood of this scene. That Eric was able to read the faces of people like Peter and John the Baptist and perceive their fear, their suspense at what's going to happen, that's really unbelievable. It's a really subtle thing to pick up, but so crucial to be able to understand the fresco as a whole. Overall, I think this project proves that the average person can walk into a museum and interpret Renaissance art without knowing all the mythology or all the history behind it. Were there some trips and slips? Sure, but in the end, the volunteers were able to piece certain clues together to figure out their own interpretations. How has this We Share project changed me? I really just have such a great appreciation for having the opportunity to go to Italy and seeing all the things I saw in Italy and for being able to go with the people that I went with because everyone was great. <laughs>